she's okay, she sprained her knee, she's going to be seeing a doctor this week and perhaps having an MRI, so please keep her uh, in your prayers. But yes, indeed, give some love to our pitch hitters. Uh, they just stepped up immediately. One call and yes, I can do that. And uh, everybody says, you know, it takes a village. And they are certainly part of the village as everyone that we love seeing it. So give them a little love.
please join me in the congregational prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord.
Sorry. <clears throat> the scripture lesson is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. This is the written word of God for all of God's people. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll have one more scripture reading before we go into the sermon. This one is from John, chapter 6. Verses 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it, is not, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. We start today with a short detour back into the Old Testament with a scripture from Exodus. The Israelites had suffered for years as slaves in Egypt. Moses and Aaron had negotiated freedom with the help of the plague sent by God. The nation of Israel escaped slavery through a parted Red Sea and were wandering in the desert on their way to the Promised Land. Now you would think, with all the miracles these people had witnessed, they would be praising God every minute of every day. But instead, we hear some classic whining. We are starving. Would have been better if we had died back in Egypt. At least there we had three square meals a day. Instead, we've been dragged out here in the middle of nowhere to die a slow death of hunger. I get it. I get it. They've been traveling for a month and a half. They're tired. They're out of food. And we know from watching our Snickers commercials that we are not ourselves when we're hungry. <laughs> Still, you would think the memory of all those plagues, walking through dry land, through the Red Sea, and then turning around to mud 
watch the mighty Egyptian army drown in those released waters of the Red Sea, you think they'd keep the faith burning just a little bit longer than 45 days. The Israelites suffered from short-term memory loss. But before we get all high and mighty against those Israelites, let's take just a moment and remember our own Israelite tendencies. Since I'm the one with the microphone, I'll go first. As a lot of you know, I have been heavily involved in advocating and caring for my mom for the past six years. This is a journey that I could have never imagined. So many twists and turns and turns and twists and ups and downs and backs and forth. It, it had boggled my mind many, many times. A good part of this journey has been spent in my car. When it first started six years ago, my mom lived up in Metamora, which is over by Peoria. I lived in Gurney, which is a far, far more southern. That is a three-hour trip one way. And a lot of times, I would go down and back all on the same day. So I had a lot of quality time with God. I would spend the ride wondering about what I was going to do about X, Y, and Z. I would contemplate the fact that I was not an only child. And then I would spend time railing at God. It just seemed like he was nowhere in this, in this equation. But now looking back, I can really see the pattern of short-term memory of God in our faith. When things would smooth out, when my mom was doing well, when the family drama died down, it was great. I could feel God right there. He was right with me. I could see the wonder of every day. I could count the blessings at night. It all made sense. But the minute moms started going off the rails, the minute somebody in the family started barking a little bit too much, it was like my vision went from here down to here. What doctor's appointment is next? What's the doctor going to say? What kind of medication? What, what kind of side effects? What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I not doing? What, what am I doing that's hurting? It's like the vision just came down to here. All of a sudden, I couldn't remember all the miles that God had taken care of me and gotten me there and back safely. I couldn't remember all the times he healed not only my mother, but me, relationships in the family, all kinds of things. I, I, just, I just couldn't remember any of that. All the people, all the people that had been put in my life to help me through this, I couldn't remember any of it. I was suffering from short-term memory, just like those Israelites wandering in the desert. Now let's take a look at the scripture from the Gospel of John. We continue on the road that we have been traveling with Jesus for the past few weeks in our sermons. Jesus has basically been on tour. He's been traveling across the countryside with his disciples, performing miracles, healing the sick, drawing big crowds. He's been teaching his disciples how to be disciples. He sent them out two by two to preach the gospel. He's been performing miracles for just them, like walking on the water, calming the storm, to help solidify their faith. Last week, we heard the story of feeding the 5,000, the story of Jesus blessing the sparse meal of five loaves and two fishes, and feeding the large crowd, even producing baskets of leftovers. All were fed, none went away hungry, or so we thought. Now this week in the scripture from John, we see Jesus and the disciples after they had escaped that crowd that wanted to crown Jesus king after witnessing the miracle 
of the five, feeding the 5,000. The disciples and Jesus had come across the lake at night. The crowd, finding Jesus gone in the morning, hopped in their boats, crossed the lake, and found Jesus in Capernaum. They asked a seemingly very simple question, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus could have said, last night. He could have given a few details. Uh, you know, I was having trouble sleeping. It was a nice night. I just walked across the lake. But Jesus was a teacher. He missed no opportunity to teach about God, how God works, and how we can get in step with God. Very truly, and whenever Jesus says very truly, you need to perk up your ears because he's saying something very important that you need to hear. Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Now, I'm sure you've been able to figure out in the short time this sermon has been happening that I am not an ordained pastor. I have not spent hours studying scripture in seminary. When I lead my Wesley Covenant group, I know that I am not the smartest person in the room when it comes to scripture and theology. So from my simple point of view, it sure seems like Jesus does not answer the question. But when you think about it, Jesus is simply cutting to the chase. It is a time-honored tradition in the war plan that before you address any issue of any consequence, a weather report must be given. When my dad was taking chemo for his cancer, I would call and check on A comprehensive weather report had to be given from both ends of telephone line before any test results or side effects of treatment could be discussed. During my years as a teacher, I learned that whenever a student would come into the band room when it was empty with a question, that question was just a disguise. I learned to answer the question, but then follow up with another question. How's it going with you today? Then I find out the real reason that, that student had come into the band room to talk to me. Jesus could free people from a mile away. In this case, he dispensed with the weather report and got right to what mattered. Do not work for the food that perishes, but work for the food that endures. Forget about now. I can give you forever. The people aren't quite getting it yet, so they continue on with their short-term memory and ask, well, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Are you kidding me? Have they really forgotten all about the five loaves and the two fish and the feeding of that big, big crowd? They don't remember that. They're saying, no, no, you got to do something here to make us believe. We, we can't believe this. Then they continue on by bringing up a story that would have been part of their Jewish heritage. The story of God providing manna for a congregation of freed slaves that had forgotten about the miracle of their freedom. Jesus answers with the story of his own. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The bread of life. Not the bread of today. Not the bread of next week or next year. The bread of life. A faith you can build your family, your service, your career on. A faith for tough times. A faith for days of abundant grace. 
a long-term thing. We are a church in transition as a denomination and as a local church. As a denomination,